Hello, welcome to the CubeSat Developers Workshop 2020. I'm able to uh, give this presentation remotely thanks to the uh, miracles of modern technology. This is the CubeSat Workshop presentation by Vaco Industries called A Standard Micro Propulsion System for CubeSats by Joe Carden and Chris Day. So what we found in the industry by working in CubeSat propulsion systems in the CubeSat and SmallSat industry for more than a decade now is that there is a need for a standardized propulsion systems. And VACO has personally seen this. We've designed over 20 unique propulsion systems for CubeSats and small satellites. We have 40 systems under contract to date that we are designing, manufacturing, or have already delivered. We already have flight proven design, a flight proven design on the Nano Ace spacecraft in low Earth orbit. And we also have two interplanetary CubeSat propulsion systems on the Marco A and B spacecraft, which have flown from Earth and flown by Mars and are now solar orbiting. Uh, by doing this, we've uh, learned a lot of tips and tricks and, and things to uh, design optimal CubeSat propulsion systems. We've already created that uh, LEO propulsion system that is now TRL level 9, and the uh, Marco propulsion system that has flown past Mars that is also TRL level 9 and many other systems, over a dozen systems that are delivered and awaiting launch that are now at TRL level eight. So we've learned valuable designs along the way, including design, uh, actual design process, the manufacturing process, assembly and test, as well as in space on orbit operations. So these systems so far have been custom designed. They've been designed to specific detailed specifications from customers, They've been designed to a wide variety of shapes and sizes, as you can see in the uh, uh, small portion of them here that we've displayed. And with these custom designs for each propulsion system, there comes a certain amount of development risk, uh, cost, and schedule impact by making these all custom designs. So there's a clear need in the industry for a standardized solution. For the design criteria for a standard propulsion system, we have chosen a cold gas system because they are the most numerous of the different propulsion system types for small satellites, and they have the greatest need for standardization. For the basic layout, we have chosen a 10 by 10 centimeter cross section, so that is useful down to the size of a 1U CubeSat, or can be used on a 3U, 6U, or anything larger, on a small, even up to small satellite, larger spacecraft. That with four thrusters, we have designed them into a single exposed facet, a single exposed side of this propulsion system. That way only one of the six sides of this standard propulsion system needs to have access to deep space and the rest of it can be fully enclosed in the CubeSat uh, or small satellite uh, larger spacecraft structure. The four thrusters are located on that one end as well as a, sing a fill port. Only one fill port is required because the pressurant is also the propellant as well and that fill port will be on the exposed side as well, thus your ability to fire the thrusters and refill the propulsion system itself is all performed on that one side of the spacecraft. So you don't have to disassemble the spacecraft in any way in order to refill the propulsion system. Uh, also, there is a power and data combination connector that is a single connector located on a side adjacent to the exposed facet, and by being adjacent to that exposed surface, that power data connector can then be covered up by the spacecraft uh, solar panel or some other structural member as the spacecraft design system uh, desires. There's also no custom specification by, required by the customer, no long mini page propulsion system specification giving lots of details. Instead, you can order a propulsion system simply by a part number. So VACO will provide the documentation on this and the interface control information software, electrical, mechanical interface information, it's all provided. And that allows us to use a common manifold and common controller and common firmware as well in these common propulsion systems. The thrusters are designed for 25 millinewtons, uh, though they can be throttled up or down by software command by the propulsion system controlling the pressure inside of a plenum volume. The thruster directions are actually customizable. The thruster uh, module itself can be redesigned relatively easily and cheaply and uh, quickly and so within a, with a limited range the thruster direction can be adjusted. 
Standard options for total impulse are changed by selecting a dash number, and that allows us to change the volume of the propellant tank for this cold gas propulsion system, so you can quite easily get a propulsion system that has that's form fit function equivalent, except has a larger tank volume or a smaller tank volume, depending on the needs of your particular mission. Non-recurring engineering charges can be used if your, if your mission does require changes and customizations to this standard. We can uh, provide that, but normal items that we will provide for all standard propulsion systems include an end item data package, standard acceptance test procedure data, and data items, meetings, and reports are not included in order for us to get this done quickly and at a, a minimum cost to our customers. The current design has a one-year delivery, and we, our goal of reducing that down to three months eventually will be achieved as we start producing more of these and we get economics of scale. So looking at that standard propulsion system, you can see a few different sides. There's the scalable propellant tank, the common manifold on the end facing us, facing the, uh, the camera. Uh, there's a fill port kind of to the middle right. Uh, the four thrusters at the corners of this, uh, this end of the propulsion system. And just to the left of this, uh, this facet fa facing us is the combined power and data connector that provides a single electrical interface. So this provides us those four thrusters. It is an all welded aluminum alloy design. All valves are normally closed and they are a, fric a frictionless design, so there's no rubbing uh, involved in this uh, valve design. Also, those valves will automatically close and, no and thrust will cease if power is ever removed for any reason. There is an electronic closed loop pressure regulation system built in with the microcontroller that is built in, the valves, and the plenum volume designed into this system. So in this standard propulsion system, you can dial up or down the flow rate, pressure, and hence the thrust level of, the, the, of any of the thrusters that you turn on. Uh, also provided in this uh, with the electronics is a level of shielding because of the, uh, the, this tank volume as well, this aluminum volume. Uh, the electrical input is a basic uh, voltage run regulated from 9 to 12.6 volts, and that allows you to run off of the voltage the unregulated voltage of three lithium ion batteries, which is quite common on 1U to 6U systems. So it's quite common and this allows you to not have to have a DC to DC converter regulating to a precise voltage to this propulsion system. Also, we use an RS-422 data bus, which is quite common on spacecraft and very easy to interface to if you use a microcontroller or up to a larger uh, compu computer system. It's very scalable to use an RS-422 data bus. Also, we have flight heritage with our firmware and our health monitoring system. And internal pressure and temperature sensors are provided as part of that health monitoring. So you can have current status of temperatures, pressures, and uh, various other parameters of the current status of the propulsion system. Also, the minimum impulse bit can be quite low using a 25 millinewton thruster and a programmable thrust duration, a valve duration for thrusters down to a one millisecond resolution, we can provide a minimum impulse bit to less than 2.5 millinewton seconds reliably and repeatedly. Also, this standard CubeSat propulsion system has very strange safety features. The propellant, propellant is non-toxic. It is R236FA. It is also used as a fire extinguisher material, so it's actually not something capable of starting fires. It will actually, or has, is used uh, terrestrially as a way to put out fires. So it is quite a safe material to have on a spacecraft and on top of a rocket. Also, it benefits by having a very low and benign pressure. So even at the maximum temperature of 60 degrees centigrade, the maximum pressure is still below 100 PSI. And also the structure of this propulsion system is designed as a leak before burst propulsion system tank. And that prevents it from having any possibility of bursting if there is an overpressure event. Also concerning leakage, we have three seals against leakage in either direction, both out through the thrusters and also through the fill port. There are various other features built into the controller. The controller has electronics have been radiation tested to over 18 K rad, so we can servitively 
rate it at 18 k rad of total ionizing dose tolerance. Also, we have a watchdog timer built in, so if that determines on many subroutines, if any of the subroutines do not work properly, it will restart the software and reload all nominal values. Also, we do not write to any flash memory, as the, one, of the, one of the possible failure modes due to radiation for electronics is flash memory corruption, and so we never write to that flash memory, so we cannot write accidentally or write any corrupt data to the flash memory. It is also safe to remove power at any time during any operation, whether you are warming up the propulsion system, loading data and commands to it, or firing any combination of thrusters. Power can be lost intentionally or unintentionally at any time, and there is no damage to the system, no irregular mode of operation, and it is always safe to turn off power. We also have a closed loop PID electronic pressure regulation system to regulate pressure in a plenum volume to control the thrust level of the thrusters. The valve drivers are built in with a step down feature that reduces power consumption and reduces heating in the valves and so it uses a higher voltage and power to open the valves for 20 milliseconds and then drops down to a lower current and lower power consumption in the valves for the rest of the duration of the commanded valve operation. Also we drive the valves with a constant current circuit and that provides more consistent performance over varying input voltage and varying temperatures of the coils. The telemetry coming from the standard propulsion system provides many different values. They also, the system also uh, allows for many different commands to be used to tweak and customize the system on orbit. For example, the plenum pressure set point can be used, uh, adjusted to uh, allow for a change of thruster thrust level. You can also change heater power and heater voltage. You can preload a thruster firing sequence and then uh, save that thruster firing sequence and then load it and have it executed by the thrusters repeatedly at uh, the spacecraft command. There is a maximum system power algorithm that can make sure that the propulsion system does not ever uh, consume more power than a certain level designed into your system. That is a commandable value. And you can switch between two different redundant a PCV pressure control valves uh, controlling the pressure into the plenum and there are many other custom commands as well commands that provide customization on orbit also the health and status information comes out of the pro standard propulsion system 10 times per second so the spacecraft and if the spacecraft chooses uh, the data sent to the ground station can have a very detailed amount of information of the health and status for the propulsion system, or you can only collect, if, if your system wishes, you can collect this data once every second, or periodically per a certain algorithm that the mission desires. So the propulsion system provides this data 10 times per second, and then it can be decimated or taken and, and kept periodically due to mission desires, but it is very customizable. So this is a graph, uh, a schematic of the standard propulsion system. So starting from the left, you have the fill cap with redundant seals. There's also a fill valve that has to be activated to make sure that uh, no propellant inside is released upon removing that fill cap. And by the redundant seals and the fill valve, we have three barriers against leakage for the propellant tank. So we then have the propellant tank, which has its own heater and temperature sensor built in. Beyond that, uh, that, that storage area contains that R236 in both a liquid vapor form and it acts somewhat like an aerosol can where there's a liquid inside storing the propellant in a dense fashion, but as the gas is extracted out from that storage tank, the liquid vaporizes and maintains the pressure volume, maintains the, the, the pressurization of the propulsion uh, tank itself. So to extract propellant from that storage tank, we have a vaporizer with redundant heaters and redundant temperature sensors for maximum performance to be able to activate all four thrusters at the same time both heaters can come on to maintain long duration thruster firing of all four thrusters as well we then have redundant pcvs those are pressure control valves that are normally closed valves and either of them can operate as a pressure control valve so you nor the system by design using the, with the controller will maintain one normally open and then use the other one pulsed to maintain pressure in the 
in the plenum volume, and then upon command, if you if the system wishes, the uh, PCV operation can switch uh, between the left PCV and the right PCV. Either one can operate as the pressure control valve, and that provides redundancy if there is uh, any leakage through any one of those valves. Also, the plenum heater is built into the plenum volume, and so that provides an extra boost of temperature, which is convenient when operating multiple thrusters for long durations. It provides additional heating th for the propellant. We have monitoring of the plenum pressure and temperature as well. And then to the right of that, we have the four 25 millinewton thrusters, each of which have their own valves. And between the two PCVs and the thruster valves, we have three valves against leakage for those thrusters. At the bottom of this, we have a table of system parameters of various system designs we can make. They're each different dash versions from dash 01 to dash 04. And the only difference between these is the system height. And that allows us to have a very consistent design. All of them have the same CubeSat propulsion standard um, schematic as you see here. Very similar performance of the, the thrust level of thruster, power, same software, same controller. And the difference is in by having a different system height, you get a very different system propellant volume and different total impulse depending on your system needs. So if you need a smaller system, we can provide a smaller system with a total height of only 36 millimeters. That means if you're working with something even as small as a 1U CubeSat, this consumes less than half of that volume, actually very close to a third of that volume, but provides 82 Newton seconds of total impulse. So if you have a one kilogram 1U CubeSat, you can have 82 meters per second of total delta V uh, or better. So you can scale that up. If you have a 3U, 6U or larger, you can go to the dash 04, which had a total system height of 144 millimeters. So that's physically larger, but provides over five times as much total impulse as a small one. And the, the dash 04 version with a larger tank has 515 Newton seconds of total impulse. So this is the standard volume for the standard propulsion system. You can see on the upper right the dash 01 to dash 04 height varying by design by the dash number from 36 millimeters to 144 millimeters. On the upper left the thrust direction coming out that thrust uh, vector can actually be modified from 0 to 130 degrees off of normal for this thruster surface and also the angle the azimuth of that thruster angle is adaptable from 0 to 100 0 to 360 degrees with some exceptions you can see here from 0 to 15 or 75 to 195 and 255 on up to 360. Looking at the delta v for the different propulsion system dash numbers on a basis of the initial system mass you can see our delta V's can actually be over 100 meters per second given a smaller system, let's say a five or six kilogram system that can provide very high delta V's. But even that dash 04 would be very useful on a 35 kilogram or larger spacecraft where you maybe just want some orbital adjustment or for a, a finite mission life you need accurate pointing, you can use this propulsion system to provide pointing for a, a duration during the mission. So the dash 04 is very nice for high performance at low system masses or a, a very decent delta V for larger system masses on a small satellite. And the dash 01 is very useful for smaller system masses of a 1U, 3U, or 6U CubeSat. So this provides a very adaptable system. You can just simply change the dash number and have common power, common telemetry, common commands, common interfacing, common thruster, uh, thrust vector direction, common thruster. Um, uh, thrust levels and everything else is common. It's just a difference of the depth or the height of the system and that provides you more propellant for more delta V, which is also useful between missions. If you are looking at multiple missions and some missions require higher delta V, some require lower delta V, or some missions uh, require larger spacecraft and some missions require smaller spacecraft, by using this standard propulsion system, you can reuse your propulsion system mechanical interface, your uh, surface exposed for the thruster in your, your basic spacecraft design. Your software is highly reusable and that's been used by other customers that we already have from some of our systems 
by us creating these very common propulsion systems, there our customers software is much more simplified on the future propulsion systems because they can simply reuse their same commands and they can simply reuse their software that receives and parses the telemetry from this propulsion system. So in summary, VACO has created a standard propulsion system designed for CubeSats based on our flight experience and many systems that we have designed previously and are on contract for now. This provides a lower cost and shorter lead time for this system and we also are designing this as a high performance cold gas propulsion system, optimizing the volume inside of this propulsion system using the uh, designs and techniques we have gained for over a decade of design experience on CubeSat and SmallSat propulsion systems. This standard propulsion system design has four 25 millinewton thrusters and by the angles of those thrusters this single system with the four thrusters can provide pitch, yaw, roll control and delta V as well depending on the angles of those thrusters by design and also which ones are activated. There is a integrated CubeSat propulsion system controller and it is shielded from radiation by the CubeSat propulsion system design outer shell. It uses an unregulated system voltage of 9 to 12.6 volts. If you do happen to have a lower or higher voltage even up to 28 volts and above there are variants to this design which are not as standard, but we have designed up to 32 volts and a bit higher. So we can operate at higher voltages. We can operate down to 5 volts. We have adaptive voltages if you happen to need a different one. However, very often on the vast majority of our systems, this flexible 9 to 12.6 volt input power works out very well for our customers. We also use a common RS422 control interface and that allows for a nice and simple data interface that is simple to operate with a microcontroller uh, written in a very small and compact firmware package uh, at our, for our customer or up to a, a full computer system that's much more capable in the spacecraft. So whatever your spacecraft computing power is, RS-422 provides a very convenient way of interfacing. Also, our firmware with advanced health monitoring is flight proven. We've used it on every system we've developed and our customers are very happy with our large volume of data and status coming out of these propulsion systems. We do have standard options for customization if you do want something that's a variant of the standard propulsion system. Uh, we have the four different sizes for the range of the propulsion system. We can provide you larger or smaller volumes which provide more or less propellant for a required delta V particular to your particular mission. Also, the thrust directions can be specified within limits for these thrusters, so you can, you can angle them in different directions depending on what your particular mission needs are. And then if you do want application engineered specifications, we can provide that at an additional cost. So VACO has been incorporating experiences gained over, different, over 40 different systems that we have now designed and developed, and we have optimized our design, manufacturing, assembly, testing, and we have gained experience and uh, de designed and feedback from in space and on orbit and interplanetary operations to provide you this standard propulsion system with all of the lessons learned and technology and advancements from all of these systems. Thank you.